So in this video, we'll briefly go through what is generative AI, uh, what is a large language model, also known as LLM, and how these three big companies like OpenAI, Google AI, and Meta AI has built their own versions of LLM called GPT, Gemini, and Llama. So let's get started. So first of all, what is generative AI? Generative AI is a field of artificial intelligence under the deep learning. So generative AI generates new content based on what it has learned from the provided content. Generative AI can also generate text, image, audio, and video as a new data. So when was the generative AI introduced? So generative AI was introduced in the 1960s in the chatbot. So it's not like something introduced few years back. It actually revolutionized in the last few years, but initially it was introduced in the 1960s in the chatbots. How actually generative AI works? Generative AI uses neural networks to identify the patterns and structures within existing data to generate new content. And what could be the use case of a generative AI? So Generative AI can streamline the workflow of engineers, researchers, and more. Now compared to generative AI, what is a non-generative AI? So non-generative AI is used for making decision and it does not generate any new content. So what was the generative AI doing? That it takes an input and based on the trend data, it generates some new content and that new content could be text, image, video, or audio. The non-generative AI is actually a trend model, but it makes decision. So instead of generating a new input, it will just make a decision that I should take this step or not. It performs computations based on the input data. So it does not generate new data as we explained in the previous step and it actually do computations based on the input data. What is an example of non-generative AI? The example of non-generative AI is like a spam filters inside your inbox. So whenever a new email comes in into your inbox, before it is popping up in your inbox, the email server will actually analyze the email to determine whether an incoming message is a spam or not. The other example could be like recommendation systems. So when you are, you are going to some e-commerce site and purchasing something. So when you are purchasing one product related to maybe cosmetics and then the recommendation engine, which is actually a non-generative AI model will recommend you the more relevant products. It actually suggests personalized content or products based on the user preferences and the past behavior. This was generative AI and non-generative AI. So generative AI takes input and it generates new output. The non-generative AI is actually takes input and it makes the decisions based on those inputs. So what is a large language model also known as LLM? LLM is a type of generative AI. Like as we discussed previously, one is generative AI and the other is non-generative AI. So LLM or large language model is a type of generative AI that can recognize and generate new content, which is similar to generative AI. But there is a minor addition that this actually mirrors the human language. So the generated content will look like same as a human can write some new data. How LLM actually uh, works. So LLM actually learn patterns. So whenever you are giving a bunch of data in different formats, this will actually categorize data based on the different patterns and then based on that trend data which you have given as, an, as a training data, it will predict the next words. So this actually makes it a type of generative AI. So it predicts the new words. That means it can generate new data as a text, as a video or audio or image. LLMs are trained on huge sets of data, hence the name large. So there is a word large in its name and that's because it's trained on a large set of data. LLMs are trained by feeding books, articles, uh, Wikipedia, research papers and everything you can see in the form of text all those things are just pushed into the LLM model and they are trained that way so they can learn some new patterns and then they can generate new data based on that trend data large language models can do text to text generation the example is like chat gpt and gemini uh, it can do text to image the example is tally or mid journey it can do text to audio Beatbot or BeatHub. Other example is text to video, which is the OpenAI Sora and Synthesia. LLMs are trained by billions of 
parameters if you look into the gpt4 it's trained on the 1.7 trillion parameters and then there is the meta llm which is called llama 3 and that model is trained on 400 billion parameters so if we look at uh in a visual way this is how the llm works so you will have some input data then you will have an llm so you are giving this input data to your llm model that llm model could be chat gpt llama or gemini and once you give your input to your llm model that will generate actually a new data which is called output data and that output data could be text image video or audio if you see the example here from the chat gpt i'm giving here the input as like who won the first football FIFA? Based on its trend data, it actually predicts the output based on what I have provided as an input. This is how a large language model works. So this is true for Gemini. This is also true for Llama and any other large language model. So you are just simply giving an input. The input could be text, image, video or audio and it will generate or predict your output based on what is your input data and it also depends on how much that model is trained and what data is provided to that model as a training data this is like a large language model uh, it includes books articles research papers wikipedia and any other public data so all this data is actually feed into the large language model as a training data this was the generative ai non-generative ai and how large language models or llms are built on the top of uh, generative ai from open ai we have gpt from google we have gemini and from facebook uh, we have llama if those companies have trained all these models and they have provided uh, some way of using it either through chat gpt by chat.openai.com or meta.ai or google ai studio so how we can use these llms whether it's like personal use by using their provided solutions or if we want to build our own applications on the top of these models so let's quickly go through it and see how we can use llms the first way is using the provided solutions from openai meta and google so from openai we have gpt which is available on chatgpt.com from meta we have llama and from google AI Studio we have Gemini. If I click on these one by one, you can see that I'll have a ready-made interface where I can just start chatting with all these models. So if I click on chatgpt.com, it will redirect me to chatgpt and this is what the OpenAI has provided like a ready-made solution and you can start typing with it. Suppose I'm asking who won first ticket World Cup so this is i have i provided an input and then this chat model this chat gpt will give me the answer based on its trend data so the first credit world cup was won by west indies in 1975 so if i click on meta.ai it will redirect me to the llama model and this interface is provided by the meta ai and this is based on the llama model so if i give the same question as an input so now based on the trend data it will go and predict what could be the answer for this input and it's generating new data uh, as a text so the same way you can go to google and you can put the same questions and put here so it has just straightforwardly given me that answer so this provided solution works if you want to use it for like maybe your personal use or you have any input and you want some data to be generated from these models you can use it from the provided solutions how i can integrate it in in a project like if i have suppose an e-commerce site and i need some support system so what i can do is that i can take for example the gpt model in the same way i have I've asked that question related to the Cricket World Cup. The customer can come in into my application and they will start chatting to GPT model. But instead of uh, answering from the trend data that GPT model has already trained, the GPT model or the chatbot will answer related to our e-commerce side. So to use it, you can go to like for GPT, you can go to platform dot openai.com and the introduction from llama you can go to llama.meta.com and getting started guide and for gemini you can go to ai.google.dev gemini api docs uh, one thing to remember is that 
other than llama so the llama model is actually free and open source but the gpt and gemini models are not free and they are actually not open source so every time you are integrating gpt model inside your application or your project or gemini model you need to pay them and then based on how much tokens you are using for now you can just consider that one token is actually one word roughly a thousand words are actually around 700 or 750 tokens so you need to pay for how much data you are consuming including how much data you are giving as input and how much data it's generating as an output so all this input and output will be combined and then based on that whole text your tokens will be calculated and you will be charged based on how much data you have consumed so how you can use the gpt model as an llm to use gpt in your application uh, as i said openai wants you to pay as gpt is not free so that is the first case you cannot download gpt models and use it internally so if you go to openai website you just cannot download the gpt model so to use gpt models you need access to openai so you need to go to openai you need to sign up and then you need to add your payment method and you need to set your limits like how much uh, amount i want to spend per month and there you can create your api key so openai can charge you accordingly when you are sending requests so every time you are integrating within your application uh, you need to have your own api key and then when you are sending requests to openai for using a gpt model based on your api key openai will charge you based on how much data you have used in your input plus output so now i'll quickly move to the openai dashboard and i'll show you where you can generate your api key and how you can see your data usage and how much tokens and uh, amount has been charged so i'll go to openai.com and then i'll go to products api login so this is the openai dashboard where you can use chat gpt here also and you can switch your chat gpt models here you can switch between the latest model and all the previous model you can see including 3.5 and 4 turbo from here you can generate your api key so this is my api key which i have created a few days back from some uh, practice and if you want to create your own api key you can go here and give it a, a dummy name for example test default project and create secret key and then you can copy it here and you can use it in your application the same way you can see the usage here so this is the monthly usage uh, using my accounts so you can see here on 15 june i have used gpt 3.5 and i have been charged 0.05 on 22nd june i'm charged by 0.11 and i've used gpt 3.5 gpt 4.0 and also i've used image models so i've set my limit to five dollar per monthly so if i'm using gpt model extensively i put some more tokens accidentally by putting some raw data i've set this limit to not exceed the five dollar limit and here you can see the division by different models so this is the usage of 3.5 turbo this is the embedding usage and this is the 4 model and here you can see all the see your storage if you have uploaded any image or any video here you can see like if you have sent the request in the form of batch you can also fine tune your gpt model so if you want to restrict your chat model to just answer in the context of your website or your application to your customers now you can fine tune your models you can also set up different assistant in the future videos we will extensively go through all these things and we will see how we can implement all these things in our application one other important thing is uh, since i have mentioned that gpt will charge you based on how much data you are providing and how much output it's generating and one word is roughly equal to one token so we can quickly go through the pricing to see how much OpenAI is charging based on the input and output. So this is the latest model GPT-40 and if you see here GPT-40 model 
the pricing is five dollar per one million input tokens so if you are providing one million tokens only in the form of input then it will charge you five dollars if you are sending the request in the form of batch it will charge you 2.5 dollar per one million input tokens input is a little cheaper than the output so for the output if you are generating one million output tokens you will be charged 15 dollar in the form of batch request the one million tokens will be charged for 7.5 here you can go through all other models also gpt 3.5 is the cheapest one as you can see here it's the model is our fast and expensive model for the simple task all these models have their own limitation and their own pros and cons so in the terms of pricing you can see all these pricing here for embedding models for fine tuning how much they will charge you if you want to train your uh, gpt model based on your context same way you can see the image models uh, there is some restriction on the resolution and also the pricing then there are audio models and some old deprecated models let's quickly go through what could be the steps of how we can integrate the gpt model or the chat gpt into our own application so the available sdks are can use python you can use javascript or you can use rest apis these three ways are actually officially supported and officially documented from the OpenAI. Other than these three, there are other SDKs also using Ruby, PHP, or Java, but those are not actually officially supported and those are community driven SDKs. The steps will be first, you need to understand that we can use all these languages to integrate ChatGPT into our application. As we have seen a bit earlier, you need to get an API key from the OpenAI. So you need to sign up, you can generate your API key but until you have paid them some amount, you cannot use it. You need to install Python. So if you are integrating GPT into your application using Python, you need to install Python. If you need JavaScript, you need JavaScript. If you need REST API, that depends on which language you are using and you can use the client accordingly. Then you need to set up the Python virtual environment. You need to install the OpenAI Python library. So you just need to do pip install OpenAI. And if you are using with JavaScript, you can do the same using the NPM. And then at the last, you, you need to make a request to OpenAI using the Python library. So this was actually a very brief and quick introduction of what is generative AI, non-generative AI, large language model, and what companies have built their own uh, large language models, and then how we can use those large language models for our own personal use and how we can integrate it into our application. Now, what is next that uh, in the next video, I'll integrate a GPT model, probably GPT 3.5 and also GPT 4.0 model using OpenAI API and Python. All the steps we discussed here will apply and will implement all these steps uh, in our next video so in the next video we will have like a hands-on and practical demo of how we can actually make all these things practical into our application by using gpt model OpenAI, and python